Hey guys, how's it going? And today we're going to be doing a few decision making questions for the UCAT 2020. The point of these videos is to do a few questions with you guys to show you what I'm thinking like when I'm doing questions. I'm using Medify's fantastic question bank and the point of this isn't to get every single question correct. The point of it is to simply start doing questions and to think out loud as to the reasoning that I'm using when I'm doing questions. But also, it's good motivation for you guys to begin your UCAT revision very early. Remember, the UCAT is a very important exam that if you do well in, makes your medical school applications a lot, lot easier. Let's open up Medify. So we're on the website and we're going to um, go to start practicing and we'll go to our decision making section. So we'll do around five, six questions and um, yeah, let's go for it. So, all Bamiyas are fast and all Fusiliers are slow. A boat is either a Bamiya or a Fusilia. Okay. Place yes if the conclusion does follow, no, if it doesn't. Bamiya cars are faster than Fusilia cars, no, because this is talking about boats. Fusiliers are not faster than Bamiyas. Um, true, because Fusiliers are slow and all Bamiyas are fast. All boats are either Bamiyas or Fusiliers, yes. No. It says the boat is either a Bamiya or Fusilia. So, doesn't mean all boats are important. People wanting to travel to a particular destination quicker should board the Fusilia. Yes. No. Fusiliers are slow, so that's wrong. If a boat is fast, it must be a Bamiya. Um, Again, if it says if a boat is fast, and this says the boat is either Bamiya or Fusilia, so there could be other boat types, so that conclusion doesn't follow. Now, given the technicalities of this wording, if I am correct, these should be all correct. Okay, one part, okay, we've got a partially correct. So Bamiya cars are faster than Fusilias, right? This conclusion does follow. All Bamiyas are fast. Oh, fine, okay. Right, so it's saying that Bamiya is just a group, and um, regardless of whether it's a boat or a car, um, that's okay, fair enough. Okay, get the mistake. A really important part of doing questions is to understand the mistakes we're making. So, five different people with five different jobs are wearing five different coloured suits and different colour, different coloured pocket handkerchiefs. Oh, gosh. None of the suits matched with the handkerchiefs. Okay. The person with the grey suit has a black handkerchief. The accountant's handkerchief matches the cell person's suit. Something here, get a piece of paper out and quickly scribble some things down. A salesperson, a doctor, a banker, a detective. Okay. The accountant's handkerchief matches the cell person's suit. So let's put a suit and a handkerchief. The accountant's handkerchief. Let's call this, let's call the colours. One, two, three, four, five. Accountant's handkerchief. One matches the cell person's suit. Okay, one. So number one, we'll put that one colour. The detective's handkerchief is brown, which matches the accountant's suit. So we're going to call colour brown two. So the detective's handkerchief is brown. The accountant's suit is brown. Great. Um, the person with a brown suit has a grey handkerchief. So the accountant has a grey has a brown suit, which must therefore mean the handkerchief is grey. So one is grey. The salesperson. The person with the grey suit has a black handkerchief. So we'll call colour three black. That's the um, it's the salesperson's got a black um, handkerchief. Yep, That's three. The salesperson's handkerchief matches the banker's suit. So the banker has a black suit. Perfect, and that means between the doctor and the detective, um, we've got four and five. So anyway, the detective has a grey suit. Detective, we don't know that yet. No. Banker has a black suit. Yes, that's true. We'll start answering questions as we go. Oh, there's only one question. Hmm, fair enough. 
Because the final two different colours here, you didn't have to fill in to get correct, and that was correct, yes, but it took us nearly two minutes. Mm. Well, I guess we had to get paper and all. Um, yeah, let's do some more questions. Okay, all cereal brands are produced in the same cereal factory. All cereals contain chocolate except the brand Chocolate, which does not contain chocolate. Several cereal brands produced in this factory contain nut. Your fruit, sorry, not nut. <laughs> Some cereals contain both chocolate and fruit. Um, yes, because several cereal brands contain fruit and they all contain chocolate. There's fruit in chocolate cereal. We don't know that. We know there's no chocolate in chocolate cereal. If a cereal is selected at random from the factory and is found not to contain chocolate, then it must be chocolate cereal. Yes, because only the brand chocolate has no chocolate. If two cereal brands are selected randomly from the factory and both of them contain fruit, one of them must be a chocolate cereal. No. Because several cereals contain fruit, um, and chocolate's just one. If a cereal does not contain chocolate, then it must contain fruit. Well, we don't know if chocolate even contains fruit, because only several cereal brands contain it, not all of them. So that's no again. Let's see how we do that. Hallelujah. That's all great. Perfect. Let's do another one. Should... Retail workers be given Boxing Day off. Select the strongest argument. Okay. Yes, over the past few years, it has been shown that shops do not make significant profit, uh, enough profit to make uh, to keep it open. Mm. That's not really an argument for giving them the day off. Yes, everyone deserves when the holiday season with the family, especially those young children. Mm. Not all of them have young children. Yes, decrease footfall is simple in Boxing Day. Therefore, okay, good. Unex unnecessary expenditure and employee pay can. Yeah, that's a good one. No, almost all retailers. See, I think the third one actually has got the best argument in terms of it's more of an analytical argument as opposed to a um, opinion-based argument. So yeah. yeah, the last one was a bit of a relevant one actually. It didn't really make too much sense in terms of um, reasoning. Yeah, four four seconds, not bad. Oh gosh, <laughs> no. Diagram should zoom out the sixteen enclosures. Each contain different species of animal. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six. So you've got elephant, rhino, tiger, lion, giraffe, polar bear. The following is similar squared. Okay, so you that. So three is definitely the polar bear. Endangered species are all on one side of the path. All threatened species are on the other side. Great. So one, two, and three will be endangered, and the others will be threatened. Elephants are in enclosure five. So elephants are threatened. Lions and rhinos are in, are in enclosures at the entrance, so it's either one or four. Giraffes are in an enclosure at the exit, so giraffes must be in six. Uh, so the endangered giraffes are in enclosure at six. No, the endangered... What else do I know? Um, anyway, so um, let's just, so we've got one, two, and three. So lions and rhinos are are in enclosures at the entrance, but it doesn't say whether they're endangered or not, which is a bit annoying. Um, lions are endangered species. Okay, perfect. That means actually lions will be in number one, and then um, rhinos will be in number four because they're not endangered. So rhinos are in enclosure four. No, that's correct. Great. Email spot, 60 seconds. I had a bit of a brain block because I didn't read the last sentence, and that goes to show you have to read every single part. That's wrong as well. Why is it wrong? What? The endangered tigers are in enclosure too. Because lions and lions. Lions are an endangered species. But endangered species are on one side of the path. Okay, so polar bears must be in three, giraffes must be in six, there are only two enclosures, that means three, but the polar bear, yes. The polar bear is on the top side, therefore they're all endangered. The lions must also be in the top, therefore lions are in enclosure one, yes. And so the rhinos must be in enclosure four, yes. Oh wait, no, it's, ah, endangered rhinos. And rhinos are threatened because they're on the bottom side of the path. So I should have actually gone a few steps further. Then we'll go to the last one. Damn it! Ah, okay. Shows up again. Silly mistakes. Um, 
can be annoying. Hmm. All spoons are cutlery and all cutlery are in dining sets. Some plates are crockery and some plates and some crockery are cups. Okay, great. Some dining sets include cutlery. Yes, because all cutlery are in dining sets. A teaspoon is, a, is cutlery. Yes, because all spoons are cutlery. Some dining sets include crockery. Uh, we don't know that, so it doesn't say. So, soup spoons are found in dining sets. Well, soup spoons are cutlery, and all cutlery is a dining set, therefore yes. All cups are crockery. Um, I don't know if... Um, some plates are crockery, and some crockery are cups. So that means not all plates are crockery. But some of the crockery are cups, therefore yes. All cups must be crockery. I feel as if I'm only partially correct. The fifth statement was a bit of a funny one, so let's find out. Ah, uh, partially correct. The uh, last one indeed. Wait. Oh, yeah. Uh, this conclusion does not follow because the text only mentions that some crockery are cups and not that cups are in general a kind of crockery. Fair enough. Martinez is a tree surgeon. He cuts trees in multiple local parks. He counts the trees he cut during the week. Great. Which of the following can be concluded? Martinez cut three trees in a single park on Monday. You don't know if he cut it in a single tree, so no. Martinez is more productive during the end of the week. Yes, kind of. Martinez did not take a day off his work during the week. That is true. Martin has worked hardest on Friday as he cut the most trees. Also true. Um, I'd say actually uh, it would probably be C because how hard he works is subjective and we know he didn't take a day off because he's been cutting trees all week so that must be the one because trees don't cut themselves, you know. Because trees don't cut themselves. So, yeah, that's fine. Let's do a few more. All the all students in nine must study math. Some students study history. All students in year nine must study math. Some students study history. None of the students who study history study physics, but some of them study French. <clears throat> No. Actually. Yeah. Everyone has to do math. So some who do French also do math. Each year nine student who studies French also studies history. No. No year nine students study both French and physics. You don't know. One year nine student could be studying maths, physics and French. Math, yes. Yeah, that's straight to be fair. don't know. One year nine student could be studying math, physics and history. Yep. I should be right. We'll see. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Still partially correct. Oh, uh, another silly mistake. We're making so many silly mistakes today. That's a bit irritating. Factory built computers are always less powerful than those built at home from individual parts. However, compared to factory built computers, it is sometimes more expensive and time consuming to build a computer using individual parts. Okay? All factory built computers can be put together faster than computers built at home. No. Because it's sometimes more expensive and time consuming. Less powerful computers cost less than those built from individual parts. It doesn't say. 
All computers built from individual parts at home are not less or equally as powerful as factory built computers. We can't say all equally, nor equally, because it says they're always less powerful. So, no. All computers built from individual parts are built at home. We well, don't know that. Computers built from individual parts can never be built as fast as factory built computers. That's going to no, because it can be, because it says sometimes, you know, you can build them fast, other times you can't build them fast. It depends on the factory that you're using. So, okay, partially correct. We always seem to get anything one, uh, one incorrect. Oh, it says not less nor equally. Okay, that's read as not less or equally. So, yeah. Fair enough. <laughs> Let's do one more for the sake of it. Okay. Let's just do this question. So, Maggie, Timothy, Fred, Mary, Sam. They play who would hook a duck and each pick one of the five ducks. Ducks are green, yellow, blue. Can be large or small. Too large and too small. Too small, okay. If a duck is large, then it is not yellow or green. Great. So green or yellow must be small ducks. Mary goes first and does not pick a large duck, so Mary must pick one of the small ones. Out of Timothy, Maggie and Fred, only Timothy picks a large duck. So Maggie and Fred must pick small ducks. If two small ducks are green, one is yellow, great. Um, Fred's duck is identical in colour to Mary's. So Mary and Fred both get green ducks. So which of the following statements about Sam is correct? Sam must have picked a large duck. Um, <clears throat> So the large ducks are both blue. So Sam picks a large duck that's blue. Yeah, that's got to be correct. If it's not, then um, screw this and we're done. If it's not, then we've really screwed up. Yeah, fantastic. Six to nine seconds. So <laughs> that's a good number turned on. That's a good number. Six to nine seconds. Good number turned on. So with that, let's call this a video. Hopefully it was useful seeing me do a few questions. This should inspire you to go to Medify and do a few more questions yourself because this sort of revision is very important to do well for you all. So, thank you so much, and I'll see you guys soon in the next video. Bye-bye.